Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Keystone Passport 2600 BH. This is a great floor plan. It's uh, kind of mid-length, right? Not too terribly long, but definitely not too short. However, you will see it has double over double bunks. And the thing I like about it is the fact that the U-shaped dinette is directly across from the TV. So even though it's not long enough to have a dinette and a sofa, they still have a kind of a more common setup we're seeing in bunk models where you have that vision straight across, huge pantry in here as well. Let's actually start off on the kitchen. So what you'll notice is it's a little more unique. Rather than doing like an L, they kind of did like a straight across kitchen here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There are some things that I like about it, and that's the fact that it's really nice and easy to access the sink. You have some prep space still, which I love. You know, it's not a ton of wasted space. It's a little bit back here, but that's fine. You know, if you want, you can put like your uh, coffee maker back there or some soap. Now, mind you, the plug-in, the electrical outlet is over here, so you'll have to drag the cord over a little. You have another one here, so you have a couple different choices, but, uh, you know, it is still some decent space right there. Also, it is a thermal foil style countertop, which is kind of like a, a pseudo solid surface. It's uh, not quite as nice as solid surface, but it's lighter, a little bit less expensive, and it still allows you to undermount the bowl, which I really like. So that way you can get a nice sink top cover on there, have all that as prep space. You'll see the undermount stainless steel high rise, pull out faucet. I like when they, you know, put some nicer amenities in lighter weight units like a pull out faucet there. Spice rack here over to the side. Up top, I like this. So you'll see they kind of have like these light boxes, right? This is something that you see a lot in residential applications where you have these like up above cabinets and it's backlit. I think that's a really cool look, um, especially with, you know, the trim up top here, the crown molding. I, I just think it looks good. I think they did a, a pretty, a pretty bang up job there. When you look inside, again, not only does the light look nice, but also it's, it's very useful because now you can actually see what's in here because it is a pretty deep cabinet. More access right over there to the side. Microwave, hood right underneath, and then underneath that is the three burner recessed cooktop. Let me get this guy out of the way here. So you'll see that that's recessed. You have the glass cover. This folds up and back nice and easy, just like that. Kind of doubles as a backsplash. It doesn't have, you know, any kind of decorative backsplash. Uh, for me, I personally like one if they can pull it off and make it look nice. You know, I don't want like a sticker or anything, but I, I like a nice decorative backsplash. I think it adds something to the kitchen. For, for me personally, I think they would have, uh, they should have added that, but you know, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, you'll also see, of course, because this one is Furion, they have the lit knobs. Underneath that is the oven, so you can do some baking. A little bit of storage under, well, actually pretty decent storage, I should say, underneath there for pots and pans. However, right in here, uh, it's not a ton of storage, but the thing I do like is that they gave you enough space for a trash can, right? Some of the other floor plans, there's not, but here there is. That sink top cover I was talking about, there it is. So you're gonna set that sucker right on top. It is a cutting board, you know? Gotta love that. And I like when manufacturers have a dedicated spot for a trash can, right? So that way it's not, it's not hanging out. You don't have to hang a bag on your knobs or anything like that. It's never a great look. Uh, if we take a look at this wall, a couple quick things I do want to hit. Just so you know, your thermostat will be located here, underneath propane leak detector, and you have a courtesy light. Now, that's something new for, for 2020. Uh, Passport kind of went, I guess, I don't want to say all in on blue lights, but they have the blue courtesy light. You have the light up knobs. This, for me, is very bright. Um, you know, you can turn it off if you so choose, but, um, you know, I, I don't know how much I would use that. I, I, I personally would have preferred just like a neutral color, but again, you know, let me know your thoughts. The courtesy light is kind of nice. That way, if you need to get up in the middle of the night and use the bathroom, you can still do that because the bathroom in this camper is located in the back. Moving over to the entertainment center. Again, the top, you have those lit boxes. Not a ton of storage, right? I mean, I don't, I get, maybe put a couple DVDs up there or something. I probably wouldn't even do that just because you'll see them. So I'd probably leave it empty. I don't know. Uh, underneath that, you have a TV. You will see your multimedia center there. This is a DVD player, so you can toss a DVD in. Bluetooth capable, of course. Underneath that, a little bit of extra storage there. So not a ton in the front of the entertainment center, but if you come around the corner, well, first you'll see your control panel, but much more importantly is you have the big pantry storage. As I mentioned, this is something a lot of manufacturers are doing in their bunk model floor plans because, well, it's just good use of space. Why wouldn't you? And you'll see that the shelves didn't come all the way forward. The thing I like about that is it gives you spot for like a broom, a mop, a Swiffer, a vacuum, whatever you want to bring with you, you have the space for it. In the very back here, you have the double over double bunks. As you will see, 300 pound weight capacity, 
One of the things that uh, Passport does very, very well is they put USB ports and electrical outlets in the bunk. So that way, um, you know, if kids need to plug in a tablet on a rainy day, you can do that. If you have adult friends that are camping with you, you know, I'm six foot tall. You can see here, look at that. I can actually sleep here and I have plugins if I need to charge my cell phone at night. So that's pretty nice. Now, you know, if you want to put two kids in a bunk, you can certainly do that as well. Two adults, uh, if it's someone my size, it's not going to happen. But uh, underneath, you know, pretty good storage there as well. So if, uh, the thing I like about that is you can put like a clothes basket down there. So you have a place to put the dirty clothes, which is nice. The only thing that's kind of missing here, in, in my opinion, and I don't know really how you would fit it in in, in this size floor plan, is a place for clean clothes for the kids, right? You kind of have to use that space for both clean clothes and dirty clothes because there's really no, there's just no storage for the kids' clothes. Coming into the back, foot flush lever toilet. Uh, now this one is a plastic bowl, but again, it's you know lighter weight, so they're trying to save weight where they can. As far as space, not too bad. Uh, you know, I, I'm six foot tall. My toes are kind of touching the front. With this setup, I always tell everyone, if you put your feet up here, it's kind of like a built-in squatty potty. But, uh, you know, overall, it's not bad space. Plenty for my shoulders here. Sink top over to the side, plumbing access underneath, electrical outlet, as you'd expect. Uh, medicine cabinet, it's an actual medicine cabinet, not just plastic, you know, a little bit nicer. Vent fan there up top. And then the shower. So one of the things you'll notice, or, or maybe you didn't, is the fact that the Passport has a barreled ceiling. So with the 2020 models, not only did uh, they go to basically all barreled ceilings, but they're also fully walkable roofs now, which is really nice. So if you need to get up there and clean, you can do that on the 2020 models. Um, but because it is a barreled ceiling, I have plenty of ceiling height. It's six foot tall, even without that skylight. You can see, you know, I'm barely touching there in the corner. With that skylight, you can probably be 6'2", maybe 6'3", not have to bend down here in the shower, which is fantastic. It's also a tub. I like having tubs and bunk models because if you have smaller kids, you want to give them a bath rather than a shower, you can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. As we come out, you will see the U-shaped dinette here. So uh, one of the great things about a U-shaped dinette, a lot of people under the misconception you can fit more people around it to eat, but that's generally not the case. As you can see here, you'll be able to fit one on each end. If you have smaller kids, you may be able to fit two here, but chances are, <coughs> excuse me, you'll be bumping knees. I have to apologize, I'm just getting over being sick, so you have to bear with me coughing once in a while. Um, but with this U-shaped dinette, you, sh you can probably fit three people here, like I said, unless you have uh, two smaller kids. However, the big advantage of the U-shaped dinette is that when it drops down into a bed, it is a much larger bed than your standard dinette, so you can sleep two adults here. Uh, they'll have to snuggle up, but it's definitely manageable. Also, you have leatherette. On the back, I don't really care if it's leather or cloth, but on the bottom, I do like the leather just because it cleans up a lot easier. So if the kids spill, you know, grandkids, whatever, you can just wipe that right up. A couple LED lights up top, so that way if you're playing games, playing cards, you're able to see at night. Windows all the way around. There is a window on the side of this slide, and that does open, so that way you will get some uh, a nice breeze coming through here. Also, a new addition is they went to a dimmer switch. So you can turn this on or off, just like so. If you push and hold it, um, I would, but it may mess up the camera. But if you push and hold it, those lights there will actually dim down, brighten back up. You will see the fridge freezer is also built into the slide. So, you know, it kind of really helps open this space up. That, of course, runs off both propane and electric, has automatic switch over, stainless looking panels on the front. Right down underneath, you will see the electrical outlet as well as a couple USB ports. So if you're sitting at that table and you will need to plug in like a tablet, laptop, something like that, you have the capability to do so. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the doorway into the bedroom, you know, it's not the widest thing in the world, so you might have to do like a little sideways shuffle, um, but not a huge deal. When you come on into the bedroom, there are a couple things I really like in here. So one of them you'll notice right away is the bed. And the thing I love about the bed is in a passport, <sighs> you have a 60 by 80 residential queen size bed. My feet aren't hanging off. Um, that's a big deal for me. You know, I, I don't like having the, the camper queens where my feet hang off. It just kind of annoys me. So having that 60 by 80 for me is a big deal. Also underneath, as you would expect, plenty of storage there. You have nightstands on both sides. And if you notice, there's actually a topper going all the way through. So a lot of manufacturers for nightstands just have like a really thin panel that's basically stapled in. And if you put any weight on it, right? Like you put any weight trying to get in or out of bed, 
A lot of times your hand will go through it, it'll break, it becomes a problem. That's not an issue here. This can definitely support the weight. You have enough room for you know, a CPAP machine or if you have a, you know, a bottle of water, something like that, cell phone at night, you can do that. You have the electrical outlet and USB ports to plug those in as well. Wardrobes on both sides. You can see the hanging rod there. Storage across the top, not super deep, but still you know, pretty usable. And then if we take a look here, you will see that your door is nice and decorative. It kind of blends in with the cabinets up top. I like when manufacturers do that rather than just a plain wood door. And then you have this as well. You have more storage right here to put some of your folded clothes. I think that's a great use of space. And if you want TV in the bedroom, you'll see you have the connections right up on the ceiling. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Keystone Passport 2600 BH. Right up front here, you will see this one has a power tongue jack, makes it nice and easy to hook up and disconnect from your tow vehicle. Light up front in case you're hooking up at night, and you have a manual override in the rare event that the motor does fail. Behind that, you have two 20-pound propane tanks with the cover, rails there for your battery, diamond etch plating coming up the front, help you protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by a tow vehicle, and you have a three-quarter front cap. Three-quarter cap because it doesn't actually come around to the side. The seal is still right here along the side, but it does add a really nice aesthetic piece, especially with you know, the full windshield right up front. You get the look without any worries about the leaks. Coming around to the side, See nice big pass-through storage there. This one is laminated, so you can see the aluminum that they use. Of course, you have a light. Cool thing about this light is that one is a motion sensor, so that way you can sit on that motion sensor setting, and so when you get in there, it turns on, otherwise you're not wasting power. You'll also see it has a magnetic catch, so you can put it up. Don't have to worry about the kids running by, slamming that, ripping you know, anything out of the sidewall, breaking plastic, nothing like that. Super simple and easy to use. If we drop down underneath, you'll see this one is also huck bolt frame. So huck bolt is great uh, for a few different reasons. One, in the event that you do get into an accident, it's easier to repair because they can just cut sections off, bolt new sections back in. Uh, also, it's been shown that the number one place that rust tends to start is right at a weld seam. So by helping to reduce the welds, you help to hopefully eliminate the chance for rust to start there. Also underneath, this one has a fully enclosed, insulated, and heated underbelly. So if you plan on doing a little bit camper, a uh, little bit cooler camping, right? So like late into the fall, early into the spring, stuff like that. That entire underbelly is insulated. There's forced air being blown in there as long as you have the furnace on. And we'll take a look later and you'll see that your valves are actually insulated as well, which is a big deal when you're talking about cold weather camping. If you want a TV outside, they put a bracket there, they put a sticker so you know, or not a bracket, I'm sorry. They put a backer there so you know exactly where to mount it, a sticker as well. I love when, I hate when they put a backer in the wall and don't put a sticker there. Like, how are you supposed to know where it's at? Now you do. You'll also see that you have a nice big power awning. Touch a button, roll it out, same thing to go back in. LED light strip, a couple of speakers here on the outside. Now, it is a little bit of a reach because your TV mounts here, but your hookups are over here. So you'll have the cords coming across, but not a huge deal, right? Um, you'll see the electrical outlet as well as the key TV. Fantastic system, folks. Super simple and easy to use. Literally, you plug it into the back, then you'll just take a cable from here, plug it into the TV, you're good to go. That's all there is to it. Taking a look down underneath, this has the load equalization axles, which essentially is just kind of the name they use for widespread axles, right? The, the axles are a little bit further apart, which help reduce sway as you're going down the road, so it's a better tow. Also, you have the aluminum alloy on there, so you know, well, those wheels look nice now. They'll continue to do so for years to come. To get into the camper, you'll see you have the Moride Step Above Step System. Fantastic steps. As you can see, very solid. You don't get that springboard effect. Also, it has aluminum treads on there, which aren't going to rust. You have the grip tape. Nice and easy to just flip in when you're done using it. The door itself, you will see as a friction hinge, so kind of wherever you put it, that's where the door stays. You don't have um, you know, to worry about it like sticking out like this or anything from a, a strut. You can fold it all the way back just like so if you want. The bigger grab handle, which helps too when you have the bigger steps, you almost need that foldable grab handle or else you're, you're doing a really big reach. And then of course one of the great parts about having a bunk model is the outside kitchen. And, and this one's pretty cool, right? Um, you have a little bit of storage up top. You have this that pulls out, but as you can see, built into the sides, you have some prep space on both sides of the outside kitchen. So it takes what would be a normal small space and kind of a problem where you have to set up a side table and you don't have to here. It's already built in. Two burner cooktop, you have your sink, fridge for all of your you know, condiments, beverages, whatever else you want to toss in there. And then we come around to the back, square tubular bumper with end caps, you have a place to store your sewer hose. I always tell people when you have an outside kitchen, 
stored on the off door side, right? I don't want uh, anything that's lingering here getting into my, my kitchen space. Uh, you'll also see here that th this is the multi-source controller. So this is where your cable and satellite will go into the RV. And then right up top, you'll also see that this one has backup camera prep. So if you want a backup camera, having the prep makes it basically a plug and play, meaning it'll save you money on labor. All right, if we take a look at the off door side, you'll see right up top here is a black tank flush, make it nice and easy to wash out the black tank. Outside shower with hot and cold water access. If you drop down here, you will see the termination and also you can see the valves, right? You have the black and gray tank valves and if you notice, not sure if you're able to get it on camera or not, it's kind of a harsh angle, but they do go up into the underbelly. So that way they are insulated and they are protected in the colder weather. Up front in front of the slide, you will find both your water connections, of course your city water and then your fresh tank fill. And also in the very front on the off door side built into the frame is solar prep. So that way if you want solar, simply buy a portable panel, plug it in, it'll trickle charge your battery, you're good to go. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2020 Keystone Passport 2600 BH. For price and availability, simply click in the link in the description below. Also, let me know in the comment section what you like about the RV, what you think they nailed, or what you think they missed. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.